This is H2O2 from H2O, and this is PWM case version 2 installation. So I've got uh, my positive lead coming in through my fuse and relay into the positive terminal right here. I've got my ground coming from my battery post to my ground lug. And I have my cell negative going off, measuring current on my cell negative and then off to my cell. And then down here, I have my cell positive and it goes off and comes over to the white wires on my cell here. Now there, it's actually a large wire. See it down there. Um, and then it splits off to each of the individual cells with a 12 gauge wire. And that's mostly for testing purposes. They're probably a little long too. All right, so we're ready to fire this thing up. Yep, this is my current uh, gauge. And uh, this is the meter I'm gonna be moving around a little bit. Right now it's hooked up to battery voltage at 12.59 uh, uh, volts. Okay, so this, the cell is stabilizing at about 14.5, uh, 14.4 amps fluctuates a little bit. I've got uh, the PWM is uh, is actually functioning. Okay, so the first step is you probably got your cell already mixed up. You need to know what your peak current is. Now, you should set your peak current when it's cold. We want to know what peak current is. So currently, we're at 14.3 uh, amps. This is the current override. Uh, there's two pads here on the board. I soldered two wires to it and used a simple uh, jumper. It's got a metal inside to jump with the two pins. And I'm gonna attach that onto there and we're gonna see what happens. Okay, you can instantly hear the engine loading, and I'm pulling thirty-eight amps. Okay, so this is the point where, let's say, you just got a really light mix, and you want to uh, start increasing it. Uh, you, you start adding your electrolyte with this jumper on. The current override is jumpered on. Um, and you start mixing your electrolyte and this current will start to rise. Uh, you get it to your target. My target is about 30. Um, cold. Then, once you get it there, you remove the shunt, the jumper, and the PWM current limiting will kick back in. You hear how the engine dropped? That's the load, removing the load from the system, and then we're back down to 13.4. Now, once you get your, you know your current limiting's turned on, so you go to your current limiter adjustment and start turning it counterclockwise until you get to your current that you want to stop at. And I'm going to stop between 25 and 30. It's really that simple. You connect up the unit. 
start up your engine. See if you're pulling any current. Place the, sh the, the short or jumper on the current uh, limit override. Add your electrolyte until you get your uh, peak current that you want. And then remove this, the uh, current override shunt or short and adjust your current limit to be whatever you want it at. In this case, mine is about 30. Okay, some people have asked, um, how do we know that uh, the, the, PDM, the PWM is running at 100% uh, duty cycle? Well, there's a real surefire way to do that. And it's very simple. You take your, uh, your voltmeter, put your negative to ground, and your positive lead to the cell negative. And then you switch to alternating current, your AC setting. And then set to your lowest scale or your next lowest scale. If you see a reading higher than 3 millivolts AC, that's 0 0.003. The FETs are turning on and off. And in this case, mine's excessively turning on and off. Now, I can show you that this by uh, jumpering my current override, it will force it into an automatic 100%. So bear with the camera here. Okay, shunts back on. My AC component, 0 0.001, 0 0000. My current is back up. Now, as I take that shunt off, watch that AC component. So now we're back into current limiting. Another question has been, how much voltage drop is across the MOSFET system from source to drain? Well, that one's an easy one too. I'm going to put that shunt back on there, put, force myself back into 100% duty cycle. With the leads still on ground, and cell negative, I look at the DC component of that. And at roughly 30 amps, I have 0.1, yeah, it's fluctuating a little bit. Let's say, uh, 135 uh, millivolts or 0.135 volts of drop across the MOSFET system. Now that voltage drop uh, fluctuates with the amount of current you draw. It's not a constant. 
So there you have it, H2O2 EWM case version 2 installation. This is H2O2 from H2O, signing out.